good morning good afternoon and good evening to everyone they say the most important thing in life is showing up thank you for showing up today you have decided to spend 60 minutes of your valuable time with us and we will ensure your time is valued and you feel valued before we start the webinar a quick uh, recap of the ground rules all participants will be on mute mode throughout the webinar there will be a 15 minute q and a session at the end of the webinar during the webinar if you have any questions you can type in your questions through the chat window and the questions will be answered at the end of the webinar we have a very interesting topic robotics and automation and warehousing and to present on this topic we have two eminent speakers sit chatterjee vp products from gray orange and rajesh kumar m head solution advisory logistics from ramco systems to ensure you derive maximum benefit out of this webinar we the moderator and the speakers have agreed to have a more conversational based approach than a monologue sort of an approach and we hope you enjoy it so passing it on to rajesh thank you Bharat. good day everyone it's a pleasure to be speaking to you all through this webinar in today's session i'm going to talk about the robotics and automation initiatives that are being increasingly adopted by warehouses and distribution centers globally. Over the next you know, 60 minutes, we will talk about the primary challenges or drivers for adoption or transformation in the warehouses, how the industry is reacting, the warehousing industry is reacting to these challenges, then we will also talk about some of the automation solutions that are playing the lead role in these initiatives. Then we will talk about the key benefits they bring to the industry. And lastly, we will touch upon the parameters that should be considered before selecting a solution, a robotics or automation solution. That's the agenda for the day. With this introduction, I will move to the first slide. So before I talk about the challenges, I would like to set the context. The term automation could be interpreted in, a, in different ways. Warehouse management systems have long automated the functions of order management or scheduling, wave creation or billing, et cetera. However, not so much on the physical side of it, which is the actual storage and movement of goods. And when I say automation, I refer to this physical aspect. However, before I talk about them, I would also like to set the context as to why the robotics and automation have gained their biggest momentum yet in recent times. And I'll take a global perspective in presenting my facts and observations. What's shown in slide here are the major challenges or drivers. As has been the case with every transformation in any industry, the primary driver for the loudest call for robotics and automation in warehousing was the challenges that arose in the last decade, since recession, I would say. As depicted in the slide, the significant of them are the expensive retail space or lack of space, lack of skill sets, and the e-commerce behaviors that have come up in the last few years. If you have noticed, the demand for warehouse space has outpaced the new supply since the end of recession, since, since the advent of e-commerce. This industry growth has also outpaced the labor pool, resulting in a significant mismatch between the skills needed and the availability of it. Above all, the warehouses are expected to take up a much bigger and agile role in today's supply chain due to new trends that have emerged and are still emerging. There are many reasons for this supply versus demand mismatch and redefinition of warehouse role. However, the primary contributor is the e-commerce growth and its associated characteristics. Due to which, you know, there is a dearth of skilled people, the warehouse space is becoming more and more expensive, and also there is a shift from warehouses being in large centralized sites to localized facilities across major markets. That's a trend you know, we've been seeing for quite some time. I know that in India, we estimated that the number of warehouses would come down by 40% because of GST. However, the fact is that's being offset by the small warehouses and distribution centers 
that are coming up in high density areas across the country. That's a reality. So I would also, you know, um, use my you know, partner, let's say, to you know add to this, uh, you know, challenges in the next slide. Sure, thank you, Rajesh, um, and, and good morning, folks. This is uh, Sid Chatterjee from Gray Orange. So I think, as as uh, Rajesh pointed out to the right, to the challenges that's faced by this industry, I wanted to sort of just step back and, and just take us, walk us through the historical context of what's happened in, in retail and in, in commerce, and what is it that's that's really driving the adoption or driving the need for robotics or increased automation. So if you step back to the 60s or even 80s, the whole notion of when retail was invented, uh, the, the common way of uh, doing commerce or buying things was mostly through big box retail, right? In fact, it's not even, not even too far in the past, even in, in geographies like in Asia or in other places where retail is probably happened to be the only way to sort of go out and do commerce. But as things evolved over the decades, there were more complexities introduced, starting with e-commerce, right? As people had an opportunity to sort of go out and buy things from you know websites or or just just e-commerce portals. And to, to react to that trend, a lot of these existing big box retailers and, and commerce uh, players tried to sort of offer multi-channels, right? They sort of went into this notion of being able to do, uh, being able to transact from websites, being able to transact from stores, being able to transact from call centers. And that sort of evolved the notion of multi-channel, which led to this interesting problem, which was all about inventory. Right. How do you share inventory across these different channels and how do you sort of effectively make that a seamless process? Um, <clears throat> coupled with that, the whole notion of the innovation and disruption that's happening in the consumer space. I mean, I, I can, you know, this is something that resonates with every one of us. We're so used to getting things delivered in our house. Uh, so used to the fact that we can go walk into a store and return something from what we may have bought from a website. Um, fact that we expect everything to be delivered in a day or next day, right? So all of these trends and the rate of that innovation disruption leading to what was called an omni-channel uh, mechanism of, of really doing commerce is something that's really led to that whole disruption in the supply chain. So the big thing that I want to just stress upon over here is that while change is constant and change has been fairly constant in the supply chain space, the rate of change is what's really driving the, the urgency to react and the urgency to sort of think about how do you evolve your supply chain and more, more focused, how do you evolve your warehouses to, to really meet these changing market needs and changing market needs at a, at a rate that it's where it's changing in, in today's, uh, today's dynamics. So uh, with that, Rajesh, I'll, I'll just let hand over to you. Great, thank you, Sid. So we spoke about how the industry has evolved over decades, and we talked about the primary drivers that call for the biggest of transformation yet in the warehousing industry. So we know the drivers. Now let's have a look at how the industry has reacted or is, is reacting currently. The first thing, it's pushing innovations to its limits, to new levels. First thing is redefined warehouse configurations. The warehouse configurations are getting redefined. You know, for example, warehouses are expanding vertically with taller ceilings as high as 100 feet, well above the industry field, you know, standard of 36 feet. And the multi-story warehouses are coming up like the ones you know, recently opened in Seattle. And uh, interesting patterns are being filed. Mm, if, I, if I have to quote one, the patent filed by Amazon for the floating fulfillment center, thousands of feet up in the sky where drones go in, pick up packages, and fly away to make deliveries. While the last one, the Amazon specific, may take a couple of years to see the light, if it sees the light. Taller warehouses, multi-story warehouses, and no aisle warehouses are already the reality. So the configurations are getting redefined. And second thing, superior throughput rate. Warehouse industry is striving hard, you know, and they have sharpened their focus to achieve superior throughput rate. When I say superior tr throughput rate, under that gamut, I'm co covering a whole lot of KPIs. So I'm talking about cost per case throughput, whether it's pallet or ton or case, lines picked per hour, 
lines receipted per hour or cost per order processed or warehouse cost as a percentage of sales. So I'm talking about all these KPIs and parameters under the gamut of you know, superior throughput rate. And the warehouse industry you know, has um, intensified its focus and effort on improving these KPIs. The third reaction is fulfillment errors or crime. Especially in high volume environment, the cost of fulfillment error is greater than the sum of its parts, such as returns processing cost, additional shipping cost, additional packaging cost, labor cost, tangible and intangible customer service cost, etc. So today's warehouses realize that they just can't afford to have you know, fulfillment errors in the scale of operations they experience. So they are trying to you know, improve um, that aspect of the operations. And the last thing is, there is a huge drive to invest in technology. It's been a for quite some. However, the propensity to invest in technology has dramatically increased in the last few years. There are two kinds of investments happening. One is investment in warehouse management system, which improves the efficiency in terms of data entry, planning, allocation, utilization, and integration with the ecosystem. It's very high the last few years because they were considered as the foundation blocks or prerequisites to address the challenges you know, that we talked about. And second set of investment is in the execution systems that involve you know, ASR systems, robotics, and automation systems. We will have a look at you know, uh, those solutions that are at the forefront, uh, but I'm sure you know, Sid would uh, you know, have more to add to these uh, reactions. So I'll leave it to him. Sure, Rajesh. I think you made you made some very relevant points there. I think <clears throat> it, it shouldn't be a surprise. The 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 biggest um, what, the biggest vector or or the changes that are driving the complexity and that's sort of driving the need for flexible automation in warehouses is the notion of again the rate of change with respect to channel mixes, right? How are you selling to through your e-commerce, to your marketplace, to your organic um direct stores through partners and so that channel mix and how do you sort of manage that mix predictably uh with with, with the changes that are happening in the market obviously the product mix is something that is, is something that uh, i think the three pls see it a lot more but even within a single retailer you know when we talk to customers today the fact that your your seasonalities that used to be a lot more pronounced um are now you know on a, on a weekly format right i mean your seasonality with respect to sales and global um you know events and, and with respect to global promotions that whole notion has sort of you know changed the way your products your skews your your mix has to be sort of forecasted and stored and delivered evolving with that there's also the notion of distribution model right the notion of whether you want to have your own warehouses or you want to sort of partner with somebody and have them deliver um very interestingly you know in, i think a lot of folks are very uh, aware of Amazon and Amazon's fulfillment by Amazon program FBA, which was one of the key things that they offered to the prime prime members or the prime delivery channel. Given the amount of SKUs and given the amount of products that have now gone prime, they actually evolved recently. They evolved to saying that any marketplace retailer can have their own warehouse and actually come evolve from an FBA model to having their own warehouse and, and deliver from their own warehouses provided they can honor the SLAs. So that whole ownership model between whether you have your own warehouses or your contract with 3PLs or whether you actually want to do some unique ways of sharing just a little bit of space. And obviously, there's, there's players like Flex and, and Dark Store and others who are, starting to, who are starting to evolve this whole warehouse space. So that whole area is trying to see a lot more, lot more interesting mixes. And then finally, material flows. You know, this is something very interesting. 20 years back, if you looked at how material flow worked in a warehouse, it's probably a lot of pallet in, and majority of that load was pallets out. And now you think about how it's evolved, it's, it's increasingly eaches, but even cases for that sake, I mean, even stores and, and, and replenishment of stores have started to sort of go down to a level of, you know, send me three units of this queue, you know? And so as the sophistication around a lot of the retail planning forecasting applications are catching up to this consumer demand. What's that do, what, what that is really doing is, is putting a lot of stress in the warehouse and the operations model. And in, in fact, if I were to summarize, I think the key areas of 
the key vectors of, of changes that are driving this complexity is around scale, being able to sort of reliably predict and, and honor the inventory profiles, the fact that your material handling processes and the, the footprint of how you deliver and what you deliver is sort of changing, layout processes, some things that Rajesh, you were earlier talking about, you know, urban warehouses and smaller stores. And then finally, you know, the, all that matters with location, you know, how do you sort of figure out which, what's your ideal location to sort of have these warehouses? So if you think about it, I mean, uh, uh, something that I, I like to sort of share with folks is that um, if you build, uh, Bharat, if you build the entire slide, you know, a lot of the, the, the question needs to be asked, there is automation in a warehouse, right? So what are we really talking about? What is this so different about? And what we think about from an automation perspective today is there is, there is a lot of rigid automation. You know, there are conveyors, there are, you know, other types of con uh, automation that, that serve their purpose. But given the, the level of complexity, given the, the rate of change, what usually is observed by a lot of investments is that you make an investment, you make a fairly big CapEx investment in one of these automation technologies. And as you sort of see through it, you have an ROI that's planned over a few years. And as you get into you know, implementation and go through the years, you realize that your inventory profiles change. In some cases with 3PLs, your customer profiles change very frequently. In terms of retailers, is you know there's you know different processes or you know, omni-channel processes may require them to now evolve to sharing inventory, and a lot of that stuff, a lot of that stuff uh, gets into incremental investment to make that rigid automation work. And so the biggest, you know, one of the things that Rajesh you pointed out about uh, the notion of investment in technologies is going up. But there's also a little bit of a pushback in the sense that why hasn't there been a lot of investment in the past from automation? And part of the challenge has been that the industry is always invested in automation, but they've always realized that it's never comprehensive. This whole incremental notion of investment really hurts the ROI, which is why, which is why the notion and the, the expectation that something that's a lot more flexible, that can address these change vectors, and they can reliably see their investment through is what I think the market's trying to evolve to and, and ask for. Okay, so moving to the next slide. Great. You said that's a wonderful insight into the change factors and the impact of it. So now that we have spoken about the automation, there is a plethora of automation solutions that exist today. However, Two of the technologies that are at the forefront in helping the warehouses handling the e-commerce juggernaut are robotic solutions and the wearable, that is voice and vision enabled solutions. In these two solutions, I'm especially intrigued and impressed with the goods to person system, one of the key offerings of Grey Orange, uh, my friend Sid represents. Representing a 180 degree turnaround from a fulfillment model where the worker or the picker goes to the goods to make the pick. In a goods to person model, the picker is stationary, utilizing technology to facilitate the inventory storage and movement. Please don't think of it as an automated guided vehicle. Gone are the days of automated guided vehicles that are chiefly applicable for simple tasks of consistently moving bulk items from point A to point B, assuming that nothing would ever get in the way of AGV, that is vehicles. The goods to person systems of today, especially the gray orange system, um, have been built with necessary intelligence, guidance, and sensory awareness to exhibit accuracy, speed, and safety. Another technology which is making big strides, similar to the goods to person systems, are voice speaking solutions. Voice speaking solutions have existed for more than a decade. It's nothing new. However, the latest ones are equipped with algorithms artificial intelligence and machine learning based optimization capabilities that create the most expedient pick paths to reduce travel and improve economy of movement in the warehouse and also create intelligent batches that create optimal pick density. So those are the latest additions to the voice picking uh, solutions. The warehousing systems and voice picking solutions of yesterday do location sequencing. It's not that they were not doing that. They do location sequencing when devising batches However, they rely upon the rules logic, the static rules logic that cannot optimize to the extent 
that an optimization engine employing um, or algorithm based you know, voice speaking solutions do. The new generation voice speaking solutions are also different in two other factors, in two other areas. One is their coverage has expanded from picking to put away and packing to. And they also reprioritize based on changing conditions. If a worker needs to skip a night because of congestion, they are able to resequence. So that um, ad hoc or dynamic you know, optimization capability has been built into the new you know, voice speaking solutions. You know, they also come with the ability to consider a wide range of you know, factors such as so, uh, pick path direction, product dimensions, ability to cut through aisles, you know, user permissions, calculation based on starting endpoints. There are so many factors in these voice speaking solutions currently uh, you know, consider. So I wanted to you know, touch upon and highlight you know, these two solutions. So moving slide, what are the biggest benefits you know, these solutions bring to the people? The first thing, various forms and configurations. So let me talk about the robotic systems first, especially the goods to person system, and then I will touch on the voice and vision system. First benefit is the biggest benefit, which is various forms and configurations. There are no limitations in the robotic solutions. The goods to person system come in various forms and configurations. They can incorporate high density storage systems, parrot based cotton based systems, horizontal and vertical carousels, robots and vertical lift modules, et cetera, et cetera. They also come in options to address a wide range of requirements. You know, it could be high density, high speed throughput, fast and slow moving, small orders, small case PKS KUs, items of variety of sizes and shapes, et cetera. And the biggest advantage they bring is they can save space by operating in a much smaller footprint. Best of all, the buildings could be of any shape. You know, it doesn't have to uh, follow the conventional warehouse layout. It could be of any shape as long as it has a flat floor and it would be converted into a high storage density warehouse. That's the biggest benefit in the robotic solutions, especially goods to person solutions bring. And second thing is they are intelligent solutions and they come with high e-commerce readiness. As traditional warehouses increasingly embrace e-commerce and omnichannel fulfillment, the need grows to support a large number of you know, SKUs that typically include both fast moving as well as slow moving items. Increase, increasing SKUs is an interesting case. It may look like a business boom and addition of more customers. However, they also result in drop in efficiency. It increases the order increases the accuracy, increases the facility cost, lot capital because of 80-20 rule. There are so many challenges that come, up, come along with the increase in SKUs. This is where the goods to person systems make the biggest difference with their ability, speed, and accuracy to handle tens of thousands of SKUs. I'm sure you know Sid will you know, touch upon uh, more by demonstrating the, you know, uh, by playing some videos, but this is something I wanted to highlight. And the last thing, one long-standing pain point that has been exaggerated by the e-commerce boom is the need for improved returns management process. In the context of e-commerce, then everybody knows that the return rate of e-commerce purchases is now about three to four times higher than it's for brick and mortar purchases. And I'm sure today's fickle customers will continue to drive the trend upward. So with customers insisting for free returns, the desire to make the return experience seamless for the consumer has created immense complexity and pressure at the back end. And at this point, or in the near future, goods to person systems are best equipped, you know, to handle this unpredictability and ad hoc returns. So having spoken about the robotics part, moving to the key benefits of voice and vision, we know how they help to improve the productivity. At the same time, the recent additions are, they have become more accessible and easy to adopt. With enhanced voice recognition capabilities, there is no need to use voice template training with new users, with the new voice speak solution. So it also cuts the need to retrain the system should a worker's voice change because of you know, sore throat or any other things. So, so now it's become more accessible and easy to adopt. And second thing, these voice solutions come with conversational capabilities. There are voice applications that can resolve exceptions by answering common sense questions using machine learning and artificial intelligence. They also come with analytics capabilities. You know, it's built into the voice big solutions that squeeze more productivity from the workers now, such as so if it has to adjust the rate of speech, it has the cognition to understand that and adjust the rate of speech so that it gets better response from the user. 
and it also gives recommendations such as adjusting the headset positioning you know based on its interaction with the user so 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 many you know productivity and analytical capabilities are coming to the system and these are the major and instant benefits i see in these technologies so sid would you like to add to this yeah sure so you know as as you as you mentioned about you know the, the evolution and the new technologies and as i talked about flexible automation i thought this is probably a good time to sort of define what flexible automation really means, right? Essentially, at at a, at a ten thousand foot level, it's it's being able to address uh, all the changes that come along from a from a transaction perspective in terms of and you know, all the change vectors we talked about, and still being able to address the operational KPIs that a that a warehouse or a, or a supply chain gets measured by in terms of cost for shipment in terms of delivery on time in terms of reducing the errors of fulfillment and being able to uh, being able to cater to lesser returns and being able to uh, increase customer experience or increase customer satisfaction right so for a lot of that stuff um, you, as 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 one may as one may recognize the, the warehouse operations in terms of how you store how you move uh, move and how you sort of deliver and, and fulfill orders is something that is a critical capability so kind of defining the five pillars of what flexible automation means um but if you just yeah build on that so at a at a very simple level <clears throat> what we believe there are five building blocks or five key pillars of of uh, a flexible automation system they need to be mobile okay and i'll explain some of these things in more detail but essentially something that's mobile that can move that can be moved across facilities that can be managed across this is a fleet is something that is turning out to be a very critical uh, component of of investment of of automation something that's modular right to to ad to adhere to some of these changing needs where you may have warehouses that are a lot more taller or a lot more ceiling space to sort of store um, um, you know longer standing goods you may have a more flexible more denser storage that you may want to use with certain certain um, certain skus a common example is you know when you have seasonality changes is there a way where you could actually store things that are not going to be very actively sold in this season somewhere in a more dense storage and can you switch that in, in the seasonality changes without having to sort of extensively redo your warehouse or extensively use labor Something that needs to be collaborative, and this is something that that we believe uh, is a is a key component. Um, and we don't believe robotics is meant or is here to replace human beings. We don't believe that it's trying to do things or replace human uh, human efforts. What it's sort of meant to do is really automate <laughs> automate tasks. It's meant to collaborate with human beings, make make human tasks uh, redundant human tasks a lot more efficient and hence the notion of robotics or any kind of technology that needs to be able to be work with human beings or any any sort of other automation technologies the notion of connected is something that is is very important because as you think about brownfield warehouses you know a lot of these technology will have to coexist with what exists today um, a lot of that technology will have to understand and sort of work across these different automation technologies and hence the notion of connected is really really important and finally i would say i think the the part that rajesh you early on hit upon is is the notion of software now while technology and software and and, and wms systems have existed and that's probably the the extent of uh, software that's that's used traditionally in automation systems a lot of plc based systems have have existed and, and they don't tend to be as sophisticated as as what a what an intelligent software module with a lot of analytics, a lot of the intelligent AI algorithms built into them, and also the notion of modern software that can be upgraded every two months, three months, new capabilities being brought in, a lot of that evolution to manage automation, to manage robotics, and to essentially extend that to fulfill orders is something that's relatively a newer concept in the in the whole warehouse space, which is which is kind of widely beginning adopted. So, you know, with this, I think um, uh, I, I, we like to show you a, a short video of a couple of different technologies put together and how that how that may benefit a user in a warehouse. Tech Pal, the 
Frank, you can turn to when you need a helping hand. An autonomous order fulfillment solution for warehouses and distribution centers. It is part of a collaborative unit that makes making, processing, and consolidating orders that much easier, quicker, and simpler. Imagine a pal who is meticulous, intelligent, has an eye for detail, a human sensibility, and works for you 24-7, 365 days. Have just that in the Butler Pick Pal, together at the top of our game. So before I pass it to you, I think I'll play the video again so that the audience can ask. I'll just play the same video again. Sure. Meet the Butler Pick Pal, the friend you can turn to when you need a helping hand. An autonomous order fulfillment solution for warehouses and distribution centers. It is part of a collaborative unit that makes making, processing, and consolidating orders that much easier, quicker, and simpler. Imagine a pal who is meticulous, intelligent, has an eye for detail, a human sensibility, and works for you 24 7, 365 days. Add just that in the Butler Pick Pal, together at the top of our game. Well, thanks, uh, thanks, Parth. So that's that's just a short glimpse of you know what automation could mean and how you could have. Technologies like like a, a, a moving arm work with robots and and automate the picking process, right? And it's probably one of the toughest tasks to be automated, actually, in in a warehouse. And 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 um, from all the stats that we've seen, about 50 to 55 percent of labor costs in a warehouse gets spent gets spent in, in picking processes. So, um, you know, anytime you can you can help with that. Anytime you can sort of assist with the challenges around hiring, bringing in new people, or as well as automating or, and, and operating a second or third shift is something that always plays out to be an you know towards the efficient warehouse. So um, the next section, what I thought was probably very, very relevant is is talk about you know we talk about automation, we talk about robotics, and there's some examples of what could be used in a warehouse environment. So um, here's a view of all the processes and areas where. Um, there's technology being worked on, and there's this areas of innovation that's happening with respect to automating certain processes or and, and replacing rigid automation with more flexible automation. So unloading, conveying is one example where um, it's early days, but certainly there's there's some technology that exists out there which could use to unload uh, you know goods from trucks. Um, <clears throat> there are others, um, but if you keep building the slide. Uh, there are others like conveying, and there's this, you know, case movers and and collaborative robots like like you know in terms of you know swarm operations where you know multiple robots or multiple technologies come together to to fulfill a task like the post pick uh, tugging, the aspect of autonomous picking. You know, you've seen a lot of examples around arms and and uh, you know automated arms to pick pick cases or in some cases even move pallets. Um, and then that being extended to even picking eaches from from shelves from forward pick areas, and so going beyond that, there are you know there's there's a ton of ton of investment that happens today in forklifts within warehouses, but forklifts also have a dependency of being human operated, and hence um, the need for uh, a, a physical sort of manual operation around that. There are a lot of those. At movement actions around a warehouse that can again be automated. It doesn't have to be driven by a humanly operated or manually operated um, uh, technology. So the aspects of moving workload or goods across a warehouse, more commonly known as interlogistics. And then finally, if you think about the outbound and sortation, again, there's there's you know there's innovation coming in place to 
to really automate uh, sortation through use of use of robots. You don't um, necessarily have to build that capacity for your peak peak sortation needs. You could again flex it depending upon your seasonality, depending upon your use cases. So when we think about a flexible automated warehouse, these are some components that we've thought about in terms of where automation or, or technology could play in. So the next few minutes, I just wanted to spend a, a, just a few minutes talking about what those five pillars of you know, automated or flexible automation mean, right? So we talk about mobile systems. As you saw in that previous image, uh, the notion of being able to move these goods autonomously, uh, being able to um, move different kinds of goods, which could be pallets, which could be cases, which could be shelves or eaches. So it's a, it's a flexibility that comes along with the mobile systems. Um, the notion of portability is something that's, that's huge because think about it. I mean, today, if you've invested in a, in a, in a fairly large conveyor system and you need it to be uh, taken to a secondary facility, it, it is not a portable solution. You have to dismantle, redo, re-implement. It's, it's a lot of moving, a lot of metal, right? So versus a mobile system like a robotic solution is something about where you can easily move a robot to a secondary facility, induct it in its, in its map, and then just you're just up and running. So mobile is a key component that, that plays a, a key role in, in terms of um, enabling a, a flexible warehouse. And so, Bert, if you just go to the next slide, um, you know, it's the same thing. It's just showing in the picture where how mobility can be facilitated through through um, robots and autonomous movement vehicles. OK, let's go to the next one, which is about modularity. OK, so modular design, it really depends upon, you know, <clears throat> folks will never go out in a brownfield facility, go out and implement uh, all of these technologies at one at one time. Maybe in a greenfield, we do we do see some interest in in greenfield facilities where people are considering to automate and, and put out a flexible automation across the entire facility. But most people would buy things or or you know in, in, in adopt technology in, in in pieces. Maybe only in a forward pick area. Maybe only in your inter logistics or movement of goods kind of scenario. So something that's modular, that's independent but can fit into a larger scheme of things. And configurable is something that's that's a key component of or key need for these technologies. So um, again, um, being able to handle cases or being able to handle goods which are go from anything between 100 kgs to maybe 1.6 tons, um, being able to sort of manage that changing inventory profile, mobile racks is something that's a key component of what you should start thinking about from a from a flexible automated warehouse perspective. The third piece is, is collaborative operations. And I think um, what maybe was not very visible in the video was what you saw is that um, that autonomous arm picking those goods from a, a vertical rack. Now, you can imagine it's it's been looked, you know, the, the perception image recognition technology that we use doesn't always work 100% when it comes to things that are placed back in a rack. So. It has to work collaboratively with a human being. When you have an order that has probably three, four order lines or three, four items that have to get packed, some that are easy and visible, some that are not, which need human assistance, technologies like the arm that we saw need to kind of work with a human assisted operator along with to fulfill that order. So any of those things that you build um, need to be safe, need to be responsive, but also need to um, need to work in a way that it, it, it increases the employee productivity and also leads to an employee satisfaction. This was something very interesting, um, but if you move to the next slide, there was a survey done in the US with respect to, you know, what does robotics and robotic technologies do to, um, to from a perception perspective? Is it seen as something that's taking away labor or is it seen as a collaborative, you know, making the work more enjoyable? And very interestingly, the, the survey came out with, you know, people felt the work was getting less monotonous. People felt that a lot of the laborious work in a warehouse with moving, picking, carrying weights was starting to get automated, which, which is something that, you know, while people work in warehouses, wasn't something that people, you know, really enjoy. And hence, um, the adoption of robotics was seen as a positive, positive scene with, uh, with, with a lot of the labor market. 
Um, I talked about increasing productivity. I also talked about increasing uh, shifts. So certainly that's that's an additional benefit that come, can come along with collaborative operations. Connected operations, connected agents is something that's that's critical. Again, if I just go back and refer to that picture and also that to that video, you saw multiple technologies working together, right? There was a picking arm, there was a, and there was a robot that moved a rack. So as in how you automate and as in how you get into more, you know, uh, adoption of automating of processes, movement of goods, or order fulfillment, all of these technologies need to start coming together. They need to be synchronized across operations and, and synchronized and seamless, seamlessly integrated to kind of fulfill an operation. And hence the notion of connected agents, uh, which kind of brings us back to the last point. A lot of this stuff, all of these different technologies, these robotics, these enterprise systems like WMSs and other downline systems like delivery and transport management systems, all of them have to finally be connected through this intelligent software, right? And intelligent software needs to be able to take inputs, take those variabilities, integrate with all the ecosystem that, that exists today, but also be able to real-time optimize and figure out how, which orders gotta get fulfilled, which cutoff times are coming up? What are the different, uh, you know, ways and expectations to bring the right rack to fulfill the most amount of orders? So there's a there's an element of optimization that happens, which is beyond just managing these technologies, but also bringing the notion of business metrics, business SLAs, and how do you honor those SLAs? Right. This is also an area where, you know, we believe this is not something that a single company can can really deliver. Hence, has to be an ecosystem player where, you know, even in this scenario, Gray Orange working with Ramco and then being able to sort of uh, really fit into an environment, be able to automate this end to end from all the way from an order processing system to being able to deliver and being able to transport it back to a facility or in some cases to the consumer. So um, the next slide kind of just shows you that there's different processes that happen within a, within a warehouse and all of these things, all of these processes have to be managed. And uh, while you may use a robotic solution, while well, you may use a set of you know, uh, rigid automation components, all of these things have to come together into a, a single technology integrated platform, which then enables you to meet your changing business KPIs and also drive continuous improvement over time, which, which is where the whole notion of AI comes into play. Okay. So with that, just to kind of bring the whole thing back together, you know, what does flexible automation, flexible automated warehouse mean? And I just want to go back to this five pillars of what, what we need to achieve to kind of make that happen. And at the end of the day, um, going back to one of the slides that I showed you about ROI, you know, how changes keep driving incremental investments and keep driving the ROI further out is something that needs to get seen and needs to get evaluated with, with these technologies because these are meant to address those changes. These are meant to address those change vectors and essentially provide on a higher return on automation investment that than what traditionally has been the case. So Rajesh, off to you. Thank you, Sid. It's a very comprehensive and visually impressive depiction of the automation. And uh, thanks for the pragmatic approach of uh, you know, towards automation too. So now that we have we have talked about automation at length, you now I will touch upon the parameters a warehouse should consider, you know, uh, before deciding the right robotic solutions or automate automation solutions. The uh, first one, the SKU velocity. You now that determines the kind of solution. You, know, you would have to adopt, or even if you have to adopt, you know, that's the biggest you know, influencer, then average units per order, then expected percentage of accuracy improvement. If one of the parameters or KPIs is to improve the accuracy, and if that's costing you big time, then you know, that's an influencer for adopting you know, automation. Then security requirements. When I say security requirements, I'm talking about the safety regulations that govern the implementation of robotic solutions in the warehouses. That differs by country. So those you know, safety requirements you know, have to be considered. Then space requirements. 
Um, so it's also, you know, the space also decides what kind of robotic solutions or configurations, you know, you would have to, you know, procure. Then energy demands, you know, that's that's part of the, you know, cost built up. So you will have to look at the energy, you know, consumed by various solutions and do the cost benefit analysis. But energy should be one of the, you know, uh, decision points. And lastly, holistic systems. So many warehouses are, have implemented the software warehouse management system as well as the robotic solutions. However, the results haven't been um, what they expected you know, originally. The primary reason is those two systems, the software system and the execution system did not work as a single integrated system. And that's what we bring to the table, Ramco systems and gray orange. If I move to the next slide, hmm. what we bring to the table is a single and seamlessly integrated system. A warehouse management system you know, seamlessly interacts mm, with the execution system and getting the job done. And both the systems, the warehouse management system, as well as you know, a gray orange you know, goods to person system, you know, comes with a huge set of you know, rules and algorithms that are predefined that help to optimize mm, the warehouse operations. And uh, we also bring uh, a pre-built APIs that are very relevant, you know, for the e-commerce driven warehouse operations. Some of the examples are API for order management so that you can connect to shopping cart, you know, in an instant, API for carrier integration to check the rates to print the labels so that you save on the shipping cost, API for integration with the you know, robotics and automation systems. So these are the APIs we provide as part of our combo. And last thing, we provide the middleware platform on top of it because, you know, in today's world, the competition is between the ecosystem and ecosystem supply chain versus supply chain. So, you know, you need to have the mechanism in place to be able to interact and integrate with a whole lot of parties outside of the four walls of the warehouse. So we provide an integration platform as part of the solution itself. And these are the four characteristics or primary benefits we bring together as a joint partnership. So in case you wonder how these two systems work together seamlessly, here is a simple depiction. As you could see, the order management receipt of advanced shipping notification, dock door, you know, unloading, you know, goods receipt have been executed in the warehouse system, while the actual storage and retrieval mm, is done in the goods to person system from gray, gray orange. And the packing, loading, and dispatching are done in you know warehouse management system. It's a seamlessly integrated system, so this is a simple depiction of it. With this uh, note, I would like to you know end my presentation and hand it over back to Sidan Barak. Yeah, so I think Rajesh, as you as you had a last point in your previous slide about being about being a holistic system, I just wanted to leave everybody with this thought that while there's automation, robotics, and all of those key components that have to be adopted. Uh, there is that notion of intelligent software, intelligent software that fits into the ecosystem and that's that's able to holistic give you a holistic solution that honors your business KPI, and that's what really matters, right? Nobody um, and nobody comes to us and, and talks about buying robotics for the sake of robotics. It's all driven by a ROI or a KPI or a business need that people are trying to address. So that's 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 how we see the world. What I just want to leave you with is, uh, you know, how we see the world evolving over the next decade, and how we see the the you know what our predictions are. So we believe certainly the appetite to adopt new technologies and obviate uh, legacy rigid automation. We certainly see that enthusiasm and and that change in the in the space. Um, new warehousing business models emerging, and that is something that's very very applicable right now with some of these new tryouts that we're seeing from, again, from startups as well as existing players. And then the last thing is, um, you know, again, in Asia, if you start seeing how Alibaba and some of those guys are trying to use their retail store warehouse, you know, retail store back, back, uh, backdoor spaces into warehouses and, you know, more urban, smaller warehouses uh, in the U.S. where larger warehouses are sort of, sort of you know, that's a trend right now. Um, so warehouses, as we know, as we know of them today, will not exist. It will evolve into something that's different. Certainly, the technology within the warehouse will also evolve uh, fairly, fairly drastically than what it's existed today. So with that, um, thank you for your time. I think we'll open up for questions, Bharat. 
Sure. Thank you, Siddhan Rajesh, for the comprehensive update. Uh, before we open up for the Q&A, uh, we would request audience to participate in a quick poll. Uh, it should not take more than 30 seconds. So uh, a poll is just getting launched on your screens, and uh, you can vote on the, sc on the screen itself with an S or a no. We will open it up for another 30 seconds. Just to clarify, you, the audience, you can you can click on the screen itself and vote your option, as simple as that. Thank you. And one more quick question. Uh, this is more to take a reality check of, are we actually talking of things that are going to impact us? or are we talking academic? So just a dipstick to understand what the audience think about the whole concept of robotics and automation. So the question here is, if I am, I am a logistics person, so do I think these technologies, not just restricted to robotics, say IoT, artificial intelligence, all these technology aspects that are being spoken about, are they going to impact me now or no, I am safe. Maybe after 10 years, it will impact me. No, I don't see it happening. All these are academic concepts. Maybe after 20 years or never. So what do, what, what do you think about it? So I, we request all the audience to just select your choice. Don't worry, you will not be held responsible for whatever you select. This is just to get a pulse of are we actually talking of things that is going to impact us in our lives or are, are these just academic topics? So um, opening up, uh, leaving the question open for another 10 seconds maybe. So Sid and Rajesh, actually, as speakers, we have this surprise for you. So this question is now opened up for the audience in another 10 seconds. We will close this poll and then show the results on the screen and would request your take. Uh, maybe we'll start with Sid's take. Uh, uh, we will close the poll now. And I am going to share the results on the screen real time. Yes, Sid, what is your take on this now? So uh, the audience feel that. 83% uh, approximately, so we can say 80% plus really believe that these technologies are going to impact me in, 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 in the near future. So what is your take on this? Is this what you see across? Uh, it's very relevant. In fact, I'm very keen to talk to the other 17% on why they think otherwise, because uh, certainly, you know, with the evolution of, of the, uh, you know, innovation happening on the consumer end, it's it's stretching the supply chain to sort of address address needs that, that they haven't really thought for. Things like next day delivery, right? When Walmart wanted to do two day delivery, it took them about two years of prep, two years of work to make the supply chain even be able to address those changes. And so when they want to move to a next day or even same day within a city, a lot of these things would play a very key role in, in driving that, that innovation. So not surprised with the results, although I'm 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 curious on the other 17 person what you know why they think. Uh, thank you, Rajesh. Do, will you agree? This is this is expected result, maybe. So this is not surprising at all. You know, it was certainly in expected lines. Everybody feels the pinch uh, of e-commerce. So, you know, increasing demand for faster shipments is changing the way warehouses work. And if warehouses have to meet the expectations, they have to go for you know these investments. So the results are not surprising. It's certainly expected. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, just a reminder to the audience: we have we will extend the webinar by five more minutes. So uh, uh, so we have ten minutes for the Q and A now. So I will. We have around twenty five questions. I'll quickly run through the questions and address to the uh, relevant uh, speaker. Uh, first question: This could be for Sid. Uh, Sid, uh, I'm, I'm reading the question now. Uh, the speakers mentioned that today 3PLs use warehouse height to maximize capacity. So if we use these systems, are we wasting our height utilization? And how does solutions like this tackle it? OK, uh, I can um, certainly uh, share my thoughts on that. So this, it's, it's a very, uh, it has a very regional, regional um, flavor to it. 
So if you go, if you take about talk about US, um, land <laughs> and space isn't an issue. So generally sprawling horizontal is, is certainly still the trend, and and the notion of having to maximize vertical space um, isn't as as felt as in a geography like Japan, where you know a lot of the a lot of the uh, bigger deliveries happen within Tokyo, and real estate is really exp it's really expensive. What we've seen is in places like Japan, places like more urban areas, the maximization of aid has come through multi-floor warehouses okay? or putting mezzanines that are, um, you know, across that split the space vertically, and then have you know, technologies that integrate with elevators to sort of move goods around. Uh, we've also seen certain amount of evolution in terms of the mezzanine technology. It doesn't have to be concrete. There's newer technology out there that makes it cheaper, quicker to install those mezzanines to be able to get uh, storage across multiple floors. So uh, I would say vertical space is, is again, a very regional flavor in the, in the US and um, it is not felt. Europe, somewhat uh, urban areas, it's, it's certainly some amount of innovation is happening in that space. Awesome. Uh Thank you, Sid. Rajesh, the next question is for you. If I understand this right, Ramco WMS system can communicate to gray orange robotic systems to directly perform functions like picking, put away, etc. Is this correct? That's absolutely correct. Yeah. Tangent APIs exist through which Ramco WMS can collaborate with gray orange to perform the warehouse operations. Okay, great. Thanks, Rajesh. So the next uh, next question is sort of a trend. I, I I'm seeing three four questions on the similar lines, but I'm just reading one question from from that. The question is, I am trying to suggest a client whether they should go for automation or not. Is there a model where you can share saying these are the five things to be analyzed to decide? Basically, they are looking the if I understand the question right, it's looking at a model or an how do I calculate whether to proceed with this decision or should I hold it? How how do what what do you suggest, uh, Sid? Yeah, so um, you know, it's something that we uh, we face with you know, on a daily basis. But uh, in fact, Rajesh had a few slides that talked about it. I think there's a certain amount of inventory profile that you want to look at. Your order profile in terms of how many orders, order lines are you fulfilling? Um, what sort of variability do you have? Um, how many SKUs do you have? And so all of these parameters. Uh, define what sort of automation technology may fit well. What's the, the best uh, way of addressing this for today and then addressing for for tomorrow? Because there are certainly there are ASRS systems, there's um, aspects of you know GTP that can be addressed through a, a other set of technologies. Um, and then and then so there's there's different ways to look at it, but I would say inventory order profile and more than likely how your growth can look is what drives the recommendation. Got it. So the next question is again for you. Uh, one challenge that we always face when we talk about automation is about the replacing human beings. One of the speakers mentioned that robotics does not replace human beings. Please explain on the logic. Yeah, so I'll give you a, a perfect um, scenario that we run into a lot. When you when you get into peak scenarios or peak periods, um, it's very typical warehouses have to triple their work, triple their um, you know labor effort. They have to go find new people, temporary uh, labor, and that is always a challenge, right? Because how do you sort of go out and just hire that many people and operate? So that's, that's one. Second, um, very interesting side effect of the whole gig economy. Okay, when I get paid probably 20, 30 bucks an hour driving an Uber, which is a far more ergonomic, nicer job versus sort of having to work in a warehouse, um, that's certainly started to play as a as a as a competing competing economy that's trying to chip into chip into labor pool like work work in the warehouse market. So. Trends like those have led to operations getting a lot more tougher and having to sort of adopt, um, adopt automation, adopt robotics for really lack of labor and lack of skills, it's skilled labor in a lot of cases, right? And being able to sort of keep up with hiring. And the last thing I'll say is, um, I'll refer back to that, uh, the survey that I talked about. There's been work done where, you know, adoption of uh, human assistive technologies 
it's certainly seen very favorable from a from a work you know, from a labor market from a eros labor market and now with any technology that leads to efficiency leads to really better roi which leads to probably a lesser labor pool of getting hired but that is not um, seen as a negative trend because honestly warehouses today struggle hiring enough people okay okay got it uh, rajesh this this question is for you uh, does your system provide visibility of all the ecosystem then including robotics visibility is one of the key you know strengths of rocco warehouse management system now we you know focused on robotics in this presentation but rocco uh, awareness provides a lot more visibilities such as visibility into revenue leakages visibility into order failures visibility into unserviceable orders visibility into multifaceted profitabilities so a lot more visibilities are provided and that's across the ecosystem got it so the next question is for you this is more from an understanding of the industry i think uh, are you say are you seeing differences in the rate of adoption across multiple geographies uh certainly and it's a good question certainly we are seeing the rate of adoption um i think <laughs> i would say there is genuinely interest across all geographies and there's certainly appetite and interesting conversations happening across all geographies the difference is in the scale right uh, you know in, in the north america and south america the scale of adoption is beyond the pilot stage people are saying this is it we believe in this technology we see amazon sort of you know um, doing a lot of good things using these technologies and hence that awareness is making that adoption at scale versus a lot of other geographies like europe and in asia i would say it's it's still um, more you know let's pilot it out let's do with a smaller footprint prove it out and then sort of scale up from there so that's the only difference but but in general we are having conversations across all geographies including india actually oh, awesome uh, thank you rajesh and said actually we are running out of time so um, we will uh, now bring the webinar to the close just quick message to the uh, audience is first and foremost thanks thanks for taking your time for joining the webinar uh, the recording as well as the slides used uh, will be shared with all the attendees um, once we close the webinar now there will be a small survey that will be launched um, it it should take less than a minute for you for for simple questions yes or no questions we request you to answer those so that we can do our we have a next webinar on artificial intelligence and machine learning in logistics in feb so we will take inputs feedback from you and ensure we we continue to uh, do good quality webinars as well thanks again and look forward to hosting you in the future webinars thank you siddhan rajesh thanks everyone thank you thank you thank you very much for your time and patience